Hey everybody, this is Craig Call, the director of Nature Reliance School, and we have had a lot of requests uh, to do some gun cleaning videos. And so we just recently went to a carbine CQB class the instructors of Nature Reliance School did. And so we're going to take an opportunity to break down and clean an AK-47, as well as we're going to make a series. And in part two, we'll clean an AR-15, and in third part, we'll cl uh, clean a Glock 19. So glad you're with us. So a couple of things that uh, you can choose to do or not to do, and that is I've got a workbench and this workbench is what I do everything on. You've probably seen a lot of me doing a lot of videos in here. Um, you don't have to get one of these green pads. As a, if you've got a weapon that is so delicate it has to lay on some kind of felt pad or something, then uh, you probably really need to rethink the weapon of choice. You need to have a weapon that's hardy and can withstand a lot of punishment. Um, in that regard, I'm not saying you shouldn't take care of them, and that's why I have this down, is that this bench often has wood shavings and dust and particles of all different things that Zane and I and my son-in-law Curtis are working on. And so I always put that down to try to keep those particles out of the actions and the working pieces and parts of my guns. Also, what I've got is I've got a, a gun cleaning kit. You don't have to have this, just a simple toolbox or something. Somebody gave me this for Christmas a couple years ago. And so it keeps everything real handy, that's for sure. And you can put a, a rifle or a shotgun or something of that nature in this carrier so that it's easy to sit and work on and take a look at it. But again, uh, those are some things that you can do or can't do, whatever is your choice. So another thing to consider is what you're going to utilize to clean and or lubricate your weapon, okay? I use Brake Free CLP. It's real easy to get. You can buy this at the Wally Worlds and Kmarts and all that good stuff. Fairly simple, your gun shows and stuff. Um, there's a lot of tests out there on different preservatives and different things to utilize for guns. A couple of things I would not recommend getting is uh, do not use WD-40 on weapons. It's got a lot more grease in it than oil and it doesn't work very well as a preservative. It's not, it's not there to preserve and continue to lubricate and that grease it's in that oil, oil acts as an attractant and holds a lot of debris. Another one is Remington oil or rim oil. Um, uh, there's a lot of studies out there, it's not mine, but you can go out on the internet world and check and you've got guys that are checking different gun oils uh, on different metallic pieces and parts to see how they act as a preservative. So I personally do not recommend rim oil and I use this break free stuff. So we're going to take a look at cleaning these weapons from two different perspectives. One is in the fields, you're running a gun, you're at a seminar, you put several hundred if not a couple thousand rounds through it or something of that nature depending on the nature of the course and you want to do a just real quick field clean of it. I'm going to show you how to do that first and then I'm going to show you an, a more extended uh, method for cleaning the weapon for storage and stuff of that nature. To do all those, we're going to get the camera up real tight on the weapon so you can see the different pieces and parts that we're looking at here and show you how to do all that. So Kalashnikov knew what he was doing when he built this weapon and that he wanted to make a weapon that was hardy, was easy to clean in the field, and uh, would run. And so this weapon, quite frankly, will run with a lot of debris in it. So cleaning it is not of paramount importance as it is with other weapons, although cleaning a weapon helps you get to the point where uh, you understand the functioning of your weapon a little bit more. So I recommend doing it even if it's not an issue for making the weapon run. So uh, with that said, uh, if you've read any of my articles, I've written some articles on this is a good way to take the mystique out of guns for youth too. So if you have a weapon, you can help youth, uh, get youth to help you clean the weapon. And in that regard, uh, some of the mystique is taken away and they're not so afraid of them because kids that are afraid of weapons, and there's a lot of psychology that goes into this, but kids that are afraid of weapons that want to touch them, not necessarily that they're afraid of, but they have an interest in them, and they've been taught never, never touch, never touch, never touch, they're going to eventually get that gun and they're going to use it. 
um, or play with it. And so you don't want kids to play with guns, they're not toys. And so um, one way of doing that is to get them to help you clean, that way so they see all the pieces and parts and it's not so mysterious to them. So the first thing you want to do when you're cleaning any weapon is number one, make sure that it's not loaded. So we look in the magazine well, realize that there's no magazine there and we make sure that it's not on safe. This is a safe for this AK-47. And then you want to hit your charging handle and look down into the chamber and see if there's any uh, ammunition inside the weapon, okay? So by so doing, you discover, in this case, that there is no ammunition in there. After verifying that the weapon's clean, and that it clean meaning that it's not hot, it doesn't have any ammunition in it, you're going to have this top receiver plate that you want to take off and there's a small button that is on the back that is spring fed and so I depress that spring button and the receiver top comes off. Now as with all guns that I clean I basically have a section of my cloth here or if there's real small parts I'll put them in one of these dishes that come out of my cleaning kit and that way I can keep up with all my parts. The next stage of this is to take the recoil spring out and that's this spring is attached into the tube so again it has sitting on rails right here so I just simply push that forward pull it up and it comes out rather easily. The next step in this is to get your actual bolt carrier group out and you'll have to notice that right here on the AK uh, there's the rails come back and then there's basically the the rail stop right here. Okay, so I'm going to pull this carrier out. When I do, I pull up in that direction. So basically, I'm taking it all the way to the back, pull up. So let me do that from this side again. Get it back in there. So I'll pull it back, and i pull straight up, and that gets the carrier group out. And then I can get my piston out as well. And again, for right now, I'm going to lay that aside. So that's it for field stripping it. And so basically what we can do is we can actually take the bolt out. Uh, if you look down on the bolt carrier here, this is your piston, uh, and your bolt can slide back. You can see that it slides all the way back and you turn it counterclockwise. Because basically what you're looking for is this portion of the actual bolt to slide out. So once that turns counterclockwise, I can then pull my bolt out. And again, just lay those aside. Now what I can do is Basically, with a small brush, and you can use all kinds of brushes here. Uh, here's a couple that I utilize. This is actually made for an M16 uh, AR-15 use. But basically, you have these small toothbrushes, and you can just get a toothbrush. It doesn't have to be something fancy like this. Uh, I like these just because you can get these small brushes down in the rails and stuff a little bit tighter uh, fitting spots, and you, which you couldn't do with a toothbrush. So uh, that's why this is a good tool. Another one to have is just these simple pistol um, brushes. So these are usually whatever that is, about 10 inches long. And so for a field strip, basically I can do that. Uh, and just if there's a lot of mess that's right at the chamber, I can get my oil, my brake free and put it on here. Just put it on the brush and put it in or actually spray into the barrel. And so for a field strip, if I had this available, swabbing that out. And again, I put several hundred rounds through this this weekend. That's why I'm probably going to go ahead and do this a little bit more. And then basically take a snake through there, and I'm going to show you that next. Now the charging handle, here's the charging handle, and the piston itself, same thing. Spray them down, and you can use a rag if you want to. You can use a brush if you want to, to get that on there real good. And something else that I've started using recently is you can use a small scouring pad. You can see how dirty this is, but with a little bit of love, that's going to shine right up. So again, Breaking this down a little bit with a little scouring pad. And you might use some hoppies or something of that nature to break down the powder residue, but for the most part, 
this does everything you need it to do right here. A little scouring pad. You can see with just a little bit of effort how clean I've already gotten that. So I'm going to do a little bit more detail work off camera and then we'll come back. So there you have the piston and that's cleaned up, done real nicely. Now I'm going to focus my attention on where the bolt slides. So I'm going to spray this down real good. And this is where using a little uh, cleaning brush like this comes in great handy. This stuff does comes off real easy. But this one, this one fits in there all the way into here. Because this one doesn't fit in there all that well. So what we can also do is take our pistol cleaning brush and do much the same thing. Again, just looking to break this up. And I want to emphasize again, this AK-47, so I mean, if you didn't want to clean this thing at all, be fine. <laughs> These things run crazy with hardly any cleaning, if any cleaning at all. And so what I'm doing right now is all overkill. But again, to help preserve it, doing a pretty good job here. All right, so I've got this cleaned up and you'll notice that I put on some surgical gloves because I just now remembered that my wife hates the smell of this gun on my hands. So, happy wife, happy life, remember? So anyway, I put some surgical gloves, try to keep some of that smell off of me. Out of respect for her wishes, she respects me and allows me to go shoot guns and stuff. So I respect hers. So again, all I'm doing is basically overkill on the AK. Just wiping any excess off, excess oil that's on here off. And we're pretty much done with the charging handle and the piston. All right, you're looking at the spring. Here's about all the only thing you really need to do with spring if you do this at all. Just light spray. Shake it off so there's no excess and you're done. You could really wipe the button and stuff off if you wanted to, but that's again overkill. The receiver plate, I'm just gonna wipe off with one of the damp rags or cleaning patches inside and out. Might spray this down a little bit. There's nothing wrong with using a brake free on any portion of this. And so, again, I keep saying this because I want to emphasize that this is overkill on AK-47. Because this is not something that's desperately needed, that's for sure. Now using some dry rags to get the excess off. And we're done with all the pieces I've taken off. So next is, again, just to add a little bit of clean to a weapon that maybe or maybe not doesn't need it, is we're gonna take this foregrip off right here and we're going to clean up the piston tube I'm trying to get this where you can get a good look at it and basically here's the the mechanism that holds it in place sometimes these are a little hard to get off you might have to tap them a little bit but this one's been taken off and on a lot before i even got it so i charge or i mean i flip this lever and if you'll look right down here on top you'll see that it's moving a portion of it out of the way and then if you turn it continued, continue to turn it, it's back in the way. So you turn it basically halfway, lift straight up, and the forehand, which contains the piston tube, comes right off. So again, on this guy, I'm going to use uh, the brake free. And I'm going to use the pistol cleaning brush. Because again, this is kind of overkill as well. Now the other thing that we can do is we can put our pistol cleaning brush in here and clean. Because basically the way these weapon functions is gas blowback. And when the gas comes up out of a little tube that's in the barrel, there's actually a hole in the barrel. 
it comes up into this tube and throws the piston back. And so that's what makes the weapon function. And so when this flies back, it charges the handle, brings up another round, and shoves it into place. So we want to make sure that this has not got any crud in it. But again, it's such a hardy design of a weapon, that's really not a major issue. So that's pretty much it. Now, what I'm going to do, just as a preservative, spray this down some, uh, just so the barrel doesn't rust and stuff of that nature. I could clean all these pieces and parts out real well. But again, this is a, this is a gun that's designed to run dirty. It's one of the beauties of it is that it can go into almost any environment and run. And so, if I wanted to, I could get into the action here, spray down into here, but quite frankly, I'm gonna tell you the truth, I've never done that, and I don't see any need to do it now. Uh, I brush it out, seriously, every once in a while, but it's kinda, again, overkill. So this is where I differ from a lot of guys on AKs. I'm gonna put a little grease on it. And so I get some high temp lithium grease, just, it's like three or four bucks. And just with my finger, I'm gonna lightly coat the rail. Right where everything slides. And I'm just talking just enough with my finger on it. And I'm gonna do the same thing here. So I'm lightly putting grease on there just it's just finger thick and any excess I don't want it on there. So I get it off but it does have a light coating of grease on it right where it runs along these rails. So everything in reverse to get it put back together make sure this goes along this lip here. It sits on top of it you might get frustrated with that if you're new to it. And again, this little handle here, this little guy, is going to move out of the way because if you have it right here, this won't go down. If you have it all the way to here, it won't go down. But if you move it to here, it slides right into place. Then lock it where it goes. And then we'll put the other apparatus together. So the next part of this, I'll try to show this to you. At this angle, I slide my bolt in my charging handle. And here's that part that was out before that I turned counterclockwise so I slide it back in there and I slide it clockwise then I make sure this functions well so this is moving closely again show you that real quick again turn it out here's the piece that I'm referring to and you can see that it's angled in its makeup slide that slide it into where it fits nicely right into here Make sure it's sitting out here on the outside and then just rotate it in. It's ready to go. So now that the bolt is into the charging handle, I want to slide it all the way forward, put my piston into the tube, and then you'll remember those two spots right there where it sits down in there and just push it all forward. Real simple light. Next thing, slide your spring back in, slide it into the rails where it goes. Get this into camera, slide it into here, let it sit there. That's real good. And last but not least, take this end of your receiver cover, and there's a little lip that you want to make sure that it gets in there. Once, sometimes it wants to sit underneath here. I'm talking about right here. Some, you want to get make sure that it's in there where it fits. Sometimes you can sit it right down on the charging handle and the bolt carrier group, but you want to stick it in that lip, sit it down where it goes, and just pop it into place. So, if you get all that done, make sure your weapon's all safe and you have a functioning AK-47. Really easy to use. With that said, uh, follow back up in part two of this series, we're going to do a clean on a AR-15. And so it's a little bit more technical than the AK-47. 
And so I hope you join us for that. And as always, come on, join in. And let's learn together.